The question posed today is, why is it wrong to ask God for material goods? And if I have impediments in my sadhana, can I ask God and move for blessings to remove them? First of all, understand why bhakti should be free from desires. Naraji says, Sa na kamai mana nirodha rupatvat. Bhakti is nirodha rupi. In this, you don't desire material things. And why not? Firstly, if we go to God with material desires, our mind will remain entangled in the world. It will not go to the lotus feet of the Lord and hence it will not get purified. Like for example, if you go for 40 days to the temple of God, O Durge Ma, O Hanumanji, please bless my child that my child's health should improve. Now it may seem that you are going for 40 days to do bhakti, but your mind is in your child. So factually what you are doing is bhakti of your child, care of the Lord. And because the mind is in the world, it doesn't get cleansed. Secondly, these desires which we present before God, they have no end. One is fulfilled and the other arises. Today you say, Oh Bhagavan, you please fulfill this one desire of mine. After that, I will never ask you for anything else. Tomorrow you will say, Oh Bhagavan, I have one more thing to ask of you. If this is done, I'll never ask again. Where is this going to end? On one Guru's instruction, a renunciant monk went to a secluded place to engage in sadhana. However, when he would place his loin cloth, the copen, on the wall to dry, a mouse would come and nibble at it. The nearby villagers advised him to keep a cat to drive away the mouse. Thinking it to be a good idea, he kept a cat. But now the cat needed to be fed. So the villagers again suggested it would be nice to keep a cows whose milk he and the cat both could subsist upon. He accepted that idea as well. And now he had a cow in his ashram. But the cow needed to be taken care of. And some of the well-meaning villagers said, Look, Maharaj, we all have our wife at home who helps us out. Why don't you also keep one? The monk agreed and he married and had a wife. Now they had children, one, two, three, and the needs increased. So they kept more cows and to take care of them, a few laborers were required. They were also placed in the nearby fields until a whole little village got created. Guruji happened to visit and seeing the state of his disciple said, Beta, what happened to you? The disciple said, Guruji, this was all because the mouse used to come and nibble at my copen. So material desires will continue without end. We must be wary. And the third thing is, we don't even know what to ask from God. If you place a child in a jewelry shop, and put a little chocolate in front and ask the child, pick what you want. Is the child going to pick the priceless jewel 
Of course not. It only knows the value of the chocolate. Likewise, our intellect is stuck on material things since endless lifetimes. We are unaware of the Brahmanand and the Primanand in the realm of God. One woodcutter was passing through terrible times. He approached a monk who used to live nearby and said, Guruji, what should I do to increase my income? The monk suggested he go deeper into the forest where he would find sandalwood trees. This woodcutter now found the sandalwood forest. His problems were solved and he returned to thank the monk who then advised him if he went even deeper, he would find a silver mine. The woodcutter proceeded to discover the silver there and came back to thank the monk who then advised, you can go even further and you'll find a gold mine. The woodcutter followed suit, discovered the gold mine and then came back and said to the monk, Guruji, when you knew of the existence of all these treasures, why did you not pursue them for yourself? Guruji said, all of these will have to be left behind one day. I am seeking the treasure that lies within myself, which will continue with me lifetime to lifetime. As Saint Kabir said, Kabira sab jag nirdhana, dhanvanta nahi koya, dhanvanta soi janiye, jahi prem dhan hoya. Now, if we ask God, there is a good chance we will ask for the wrong things. Instead, if we leave it to His judgment, He will then decide what is best for us and give it in accordance with His divine wisdom. Hence, the truly intelligent devotee says, Meri chahi mat karo, me murak agyan. My Lord, even if I ask you for material things, don't listen to me because my intellect is corrupted and I may ask you for wrong things. So please, it is in your wish that my welfare lies. This brings us to the principle of Nishkam Bhakti, where we neither seek bhukti nor mukti. We neither ask God for material gratification nor for liberation from material bondage. Instead, we make His happiness the goal of our loving devotion. Once that goal is established and we decide that I want to give Him happiness, now we can seek to increase our bhakti to give him ever increasing happiness. And if there is an obstacle on the path, we can always pray, my Lord, it's beyond my capacity. You please see what can be done. Let's read about it from my latest book, Questions You Always Wanted to Ask. You can selflessly seek God's help in overcoming a barrier to your devotion. Remember not to demand that He make your situation more comfortable for you. Instead, make your prayer something like this. O Shri Krishna, I wish to serve you with all my heart. But due to my material infirmities, I fall short. Please bestow on me the faith, devotion and self-control that I may serve you well. If you wish to remove obstacles I face in bhakti, it is up to you. 
whatever be the case i will continue putting all my best efforts in loving service to you the beauty of this prayer is that we are putting the outcome in his hands without any insistence or demands from our side there's a story from the time of chaitanya mahaprabhu in his purvashram he lived in navadweep and was lovingly called nimai in navadweep lived a very poor but highly devotional brahman called khola bech shridhar shridhar had a small banana garden and he would subsist by selling the produce of the garden every day he would take the leaves the fruits the flowers the barks the roots and try and sell them in the market place for whatever he could get knowing his devotion mahaprabhu ji would visit him daily and tease him first of all he would decide what all he wanted and then ask for the price although shridhar quoted a reasonable price nimai would start bargaining i'll give you only half of that and shridhar would feel tormented look i am not earning any profit why do you trouble me like this why don't you go elsewhere but mahaprabhu ji loved that interaction sometimes he would come and say i am thirsty and he would pick up the water vessel of shridhar there would be a hole in it nevertheless he would fill it with ganga jal place his finger under the hole and drink it and seeing that shridhar would be distraught and say why do you trouble me like this one day nimai revealed to shridhar his divine form as shri krishna and then asked him if you have any boon you seek please ask shridhar responded what can i ask mahaprabhu said do you want material treasures Shridhar responded that is not very important for me Mahaprabhu ji said do you want mystic abilities to walk on water manifest objects transpolate things Shridhar said that will distract me from my devotion at the feet of Shri Krishna Mahaprabhu ji said should i give you liberation Shridhar said look Maharaj if you are insisting then i have only one request please continue visiting me every day in the market place fighting and quarreling with me while you bargain about purchasing my products i love that more than anything else So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has encapsulated that sentiment in his Shikshashtakam when he states na dhanam na janam na sundarim kavitam va jagadish kamaye mam janmani janmani shvare bhavatad bhakti rahitu ki tvai he says o shri krishna I don't want any kind of material luxury from you. I don't even want liberation from material bondage. You please bless me that in my every life I should get the opportunity to serve your lotus feet. It is this kind of selfless devotion that binds and enslaves God and that devotion we should make the goal of our sadhana. In this age we see an unprecedented increase in the collective knowledge of humankind 
there are numerous institutions and online resources for acquiring knowledge. Despite this informational flood, an enormous development in technologies and standard of living, we are witnessing an increase in confusion, stress, discontentment, decay of spiritual wisdom and human values. For the upliftment of mankind, Jagat Guru Sri Kripaluji Maharaj, who was an embodiment of spiritual knowledge and divine bliss, extracted and reconciled the wisdom from the enormous ocean of Vedic scriptures and made it understandable and accessible for everyone. To spread Maharaji's mission to planetary scales, Swami Mukudananji has undertaken a monumental task of building Jagat Guru Kripalu University. Understanding the needs of present-day humanity, Swamiji's vision combines cutting-edge scientific disciplines with ancient Vedic wisdom, making JKU a one-of-a-kind blend. The university will encompass the areas of Vedic philosophy, yoga, contemporary sciences, technologies, holistic medicine and arts. Construction of this millennial complex is at full swing on a 100-acre land in Orissa, India. It will play a crucial role in uplifting physical, mental and spiritual well-being of millions of people worldwide. The university will provide education and healthcare to the underprivileged in rural areas of Orissa. This synergy of modern and ancient wisdom will be a stepping stone to revive the glorious past of Bharatvarsh. Today, you have once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to become Swamiji's angel and support his dream project. Alone, we can go so far. But together, we can re-establish India as the Jagat Guru of the world. Donate or raise funds for this noble cause. Every contribution will have a huge impact. Become a part of this historic event.